Hello, my name is Axel Kuhn and we are going to present you now how to trap atoms in optical tweezers. I have with me Jan, uh, Dustin and Sisi. So Sisi is going to reveal the secrets of our project. Neutral atoms trapped with laser light are amongst the most promising candidates for the storage and processing of information in quantum computing and quantum simulation. The ability to address and manipulate these atoms in a coherent, scalable, and flexible way is one of the central themes in this approach to quantum information processing. The long-term goal of our research is to make a sort of switchyard for single atoms, a scalable quantum computing network which uses the atoms of stationary qubits and the photons of flying qubits to communicate between the nodes of an array. Of course, the, to actually address and manipulate a single one of these atoms, we need a way to hold them. And what we do is we use an optical dipole force trap, or an optical tweezer. The principle behind an optical tweezer is illustrated by this cartoon. Atoms in a highly focused ready tune laser beam are attracted towards the point's largest intensity. In order to create these optical tweezers, we shine our trapping light onto the surface of a digital mirror device, or DMD, and we image the surface of this DMD into the vacuum chamber using a two-lens microscope. The DMD consists of an array of 1,024 by 768 tiny mirrors, each of which can be switched on and off independently. This allows us to create uh, an, an overwhelming possibility of different potentials. Uh, a 4x4 four four block of mirrors on our digital mirror device corresponds to a 1 micron spot in the plane where the, the cold rubidium atoms are trapped. And each of these 1 micron trapping sites is capable of trapping a single atom. And so here you can see with our experiment we're able of creating large arrays of maybe 100 trapping sites, which would allow us to create a highly scalable quantum computer. And this is just to demonstrate the um, actual strength of this by trapping a cloud of atoms in either a line, a grid, a bullseye, or even a star if you want to. Uh, obviously the ultimate goal, however, is to be able to move these clouds of atoms arbitrarily so we can do interesting physics with them. And one naive way you might want to do this is to say just move the trap itself. Uh, unfortunately, because of the discrete nature of the, um, the mirrors, this creates a lot of heating in the trap and therefore you lose a lot of atoms. Our solution to this is to use a ballistic release and recapture transport. We do this by opening a transport channel between an initial and an end position, and we time the recapture to coincide with half an oscillation period of the atoms in the trap. The demagnification of our optical system means that we cannot resolve individual mirrors. In fact, a 4x4 four four block of mirrors forms a 1 micron diffraction limited spot. What this means is that we have up to 16 different levels of intensity that we can work with. And that in turn means that we can use dithered patterns on the DMD to approximate the harmonic potentials needed for the ballistic transport. On the left you can see two clouds of trapped atoms oscillating past each other in two separate transport potentials in opposite directions. On the right, you can see a graph of the atoms oscillating freely or being recaptured on the other side. This clearly shows the flexibility of our scheme and the way that we are able to manipulate the atoms in a fast and independent way. The level of control we have now achieved with spatial light modulators is unprecedented. In principle, we have realized a number of independent swings on the atomic scale. These can be used to transport either physicists or trapped atoms to various different positions.